Well, welcome everyone to Race Face TV and this edition of Who's Next? So today, we're going to be going up to New Jersey, actually East Windsor, New Jersey, where we find nine-year-old quarter midget sensation Jackson White. Jackson, how are you doing this evening? Good, how are you? I'm great, man. So, looks like a lot of things have been going on in your career. I see a lot of hardware behind you there. And uh, so the first question I do want to ask you is what made you become a racer? What made you make that decision that you wanted to get in and drive race cars? One day my dad took me down to the closest track, quarter major track that I went to that is near my house, which is Little Wall. So I sat there for a few weeks or for a few hours every week on Sunday to watch how the cars go go around the track and see how they like moved and how the drivers drove them and things. And then one day I was just like, when can I get one of these? And he was like, soon. And I was just like, all right. And then one day we went to novice training and I did that and I was out of that pretty quick. So then I ran junior novice for a little bit and then I and then I just started moving up to junior Honda which I got stuck in because of my age at that time. Right. So what age did you actually start competing at the racetrack? Six years old. Six years old. So you got three years under your belt, almost probably going on your fourth year since you got a birthday coming up. Now you make the Garden State Quarter Midget Racing Club is your home base. Is that correct? Yes. Now tell us a little bit about that organization, if you know how long it's been around. Tell us kind of some of the cool things that people would get to see if they actually ventured up there to run quarter midgets. Um, some of the cool things that I've seen is we have a big track right next to our home track, which is, it's like there's a big gate that separates us. So we get to, sometimes we get tickets to watch the bigger cars and and then we have, and sometimes the bigger drivers come up to the fence to watch us. So it's kind of fun to have some of the bigger, like, names and drivers of the bigger cars come in, come down and watch the quarter midgets that they might have used to race. Or, like, they come, it's really cool to have, like, professional drivers watching you. Right. Now, that bigger track, is that a dirt track or an asphalt track? Asphalt. It's an it's asphalt track. Almost as the little track. Okay. Now, do they? What what type of cars do they run there? Do they run like late models and sprints and a variety yeah. of different things? Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I was looking at as I was kind of looking over your stats and your bio and stuff like that is that you've literally raced all over the country. I saw Phoenix, Indianapolis, Pocono, Chicago, Charlotte, and that was just to name a few. So, at nine years old. That's pretty amazing that you've had that opportunity, and more importantly, that your parents have allowed you to be able to experience that because um, you know not a lot of not a lot of nine-year-olds have got to race all over the country like that. So has that been pretty cool for you? Yeah, it's pretty exciting for a nine-year-old to start traveling across the country all of a sudden and to to allow to my parents to allow me to do this and my school. They get they allow me to do this too. If if I if I didn't have the grades that I did, I probably I wouldn't I wouldn't have gone to any of the places you just named. I probably would have still been stuck here racing at Oak Lane and Wall every yeah, the, weekend instead of going to all the nationals and regionals and all the places that we've been. Right. So the school is is really cool to be working with you like that. So I can just imagine in your in your house, you know, when it's that race weekend, is your dad like or mom flip on the light switch and say, road trip, it's time to go. And then you guys are just uh, in the car and you're off, huh? Yeah, most of the time it's just, my dad picks me up early from school in the camper in the trailer and we head off to whatever destination we're going to. Yeah, that's, that's awesome, that's awesome. So, you just surpassed 200 feature wins. Now, we were talking a little bit before we came on the show. I know that you got three wins this weekend, right? Yes. So what's your number up to now? I know it's got to be over 203. Yeah, it's about like 207, 2010, somewhere, I mean 210, somewhere around there. All right, so, no, oh, go ahead. No, that's all I Oh, okay, all right. So now, every one of our 
uh, drivers that we have on, we play a little game. And it's called Get to Know Jackson in 60 Seconds. Are you ready to play? Absolutely. All right, so here we go. What is your favorite food? Pizza or ravioli. Pizza or ravioli. What's your favorite video game? NBA Live 18. All right, TV show. Top Gear or Knife or Death. All right, favorite color? Orange. Favorite superhero? My dad. Your dad, oh, great answer. You just won the award for the best answer for the best superhero. Who's your favorite NASCAR driver? Martin Truex, Kevin Harvick, and Kurt Busch. All right, so let me just ask you a question. What, about, what makes Martin Truex one of your favorite drivers? Because he's from the Northeast? Uh, yeah, he's from my home state, and whenever he has interviews or stuff, he always, like, thanks his crew and his family and his wife and stuff, and he just seems very friendly and nice to, like, meet. I really want to meet him someday and, like, ask him a lot of questions, and he just seems like a nice person. Well, he's a great role model. Let me tell you what, that's a, that's a perfect driver to be modeling yourself off. Now, you had Kevin Harvick in there. What makes you a Kevin Harvick fan? I I don't know actually. He's just a good driver and I he he he's with one of my favorite like com he's with one of my favorite like racing associations with his store Haas. So I like I like like I like like I said Kurt Busch and Kevin Harvick, they were they were both in store Stuart Haas. So I kinda like Stuart Haas. There's only Martin Truex who's out of that. Yeah, so was you was you a Tony Stewart fan too? No. He wasn't okay. All right. Last question. We kind of got. I kind of got off pe the the path there. Do you have a pet? Yes, I have my dog, who's named Buster, and he's turning eleven in August. Then I have a turtle that we found. My brother found on my driveway, who's about the size of a quarter, like this small. Like, that's, what's Buster think about him? He doesn't really go near him. He's just like, he just like gets snuggled up with the covers and stuff. My right. turtle's just in, his, just in his cage, eating and falling asleep and hiding. Eating, falling asleep and hiding. That sounds like a pretty good job there. I'd like, I'd like to do that all the time. So let's do a quick rundown of your quarter midget racing career. And I'm going to start off by, because if we went through all the wins that you've had and all the championships that you've run, we'd be here all night. So I'm just going to highlight some. And then I want you to give me some input on what some of the bigger ones were for you. So 2016, the Dirt Grands Champion for Junior Honda. 2016, and I know this one should be kind of high on your list. That's the Buckeye Winter National Championship for Junior Honda. And then 2017, because I, I see those USAC trophies sitting on both sides of you. You were 2017 National USAC Champion in Junior Honda. And the neat thing about that was you won all five national races. Now, you finished second in junior animals, winning three of the five races, and probably would have won that championship from what I've been able to kind of uh, hear, but you had a parts failure at Indy that, that kind of cost you some points. And then you won the national USAC championship in light 160 against much older drivers than you. So... Out of all of those, and then all of the rest of the races that you've won in championships, which ones would you highlight as your most accomplished? Um, I would probably highlight winning the Junior Honda National Championship for USAC .25, and winning the Light 160.25 National Championship in one year because nobody's ever done that. And it's really just, it's really exciting and amazing that a nine-year-old could win a junior and a senior championship in one year. You know what was kind of funny was I was going through my phone um, just yesterday. I was kind of scrolling through uh, because I was actually at the USAC banquet in Indianapolis. And I'm like, that's Jackson. So we actually met and we didn't even know that we met. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you a question. The very first time that you won a race, if you can remember back, what was it like to be able to win that first race. Was that not like one of the coolest things that ever happened to you? It wasn't exactly cool. It was kind of just, it was just like, I just won a junior novice 
race in my like in my second race or whatever and it was just like really cool and also it was kind of scary because when i got the checkered flag and went around turn one and two and i came out of turn two i decided to switch hands from my left to my right so the flag went over my visor and i couldn't see so i was just lucky that i didn't ran into the wall with my car and luckily the flag flopped out of the way and i could i could see coming into turn three that's funny. You know how many times that I've talked to young quarter midget drivers that said they've had crazy things that happened to them on victory laps? I had uh, one guest on last week that was talking about he wanted to do a donut. Instead of doing a donut, he just basically spun around and hit the wall. So, uh, but that's, uh, that's, that's pretty awesome. Is there, I mean, isn't that such a kind of like an adrenaline rush, if you would, when you get to take that checkered flag around and and everybody's watching you because you're the only car on the track. You know that you've won and are holding that checkered flag. I don't know who invented the victory lap with the checkered flag, but man, that's, that's just so cool. I mean, it's kind of, it's, I don't really like, I don't really pay attention to that. I have this, I have this competition with myself and I try to set a faster lap when I'm doing victory laps than I did in the race. So I try to go around the track full throttle with the checkered flag driving with one hand and try to beat my record. I've actually done that maybe once or twice. No, that's a new one on me. I've not heard that one. So I know to be as accomplished racer as you have, that you've had to make a lot of sacrifices. <clears throat> had to give up some things that, you know, most normal kids your age would be able to do. So talk to us a little bit about some of those sacrifices. Well, it's kind of weird because I haven't made that many. I've lost a ton of school. And I've had a lot of homework, which is not exactly what I wanted to be doing while I'm heading down to wherever I'm going. And I've also missed basketball games. Those are, like, important because you could be, for my league, they're important because there's playoffs and stuff, and I'm missing important games. But I would rather race than do mostly anything else. So I, I go racing instead of that. Sometimes coaches get mad, but oh well. Well, they won't be mad when you're inviting them to come down to one of the big NASCAR events as their guest and let them set up on the pit box or something like that, you know, maybe 10, 15 years down the road. So I know one thing, you, you and I could hang out because you've, you've said three important things. You love racing, you like pizza, and you like basketball. That's like right up my alley. That's, that's kind of, if you looked at my makeup inside, that's probably three of the things that you would, you would know about me. So who are your biggest supporters? My mom, my dad, my brother, my dog, and my turtle for helping me along the way with my racing career. Mr. Fitz, who's given me great cars throughout my years of racing. Mr. Letter, who's given me also great motors for my racing career. My Grammy and Pop Pop are the last ones. They've helped me every weekend after I'm done. They've always called and asked, because they live in Maine. They've always called afterwards for like to congratulate me and they've asked me how I'm how I did and I always tell them good and they 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 really help like if I've had a bad weekend. So what does the rest of your 2018 year look like? You got some big races coming up? Yeah, we have the national at Texas, then we have the national we have the rest of the nationals, then we have the Northeast Titan series regionals. And we also have, at the end, end of the year, we have the Ohio Buckeye Indoors. And then we also have, for the mostly the rest of the year, when we're not racing national or regional, we have my home track wall weekly races. All right, so tell me what your racing goals are. What, what, what do you, where do you want to go in your racing career? I want to try to get to the Monster Energy Series, and my goals are to maybe get, like, another hundred more wins in my career to get maybe up to 10 chance national championships because I want to be one of the like to rem I want to be like one of the remembered like drivers for national 0.25 racing and I also want to uh, that's that's it actually yeah so you're so you've, you've got your eyes set on a NASCAR career, so you'd walk yourself up through those levels of, you know, probably the K&N series, ARCA, Trucks, Xfinity, and then into the Cup series. So for anybody that might be out there watching, if you could pick today a perfect sponsor for you to help you make it 
to the NASCAR level, who would that sponsor be? Mm. You like pizza, so it could, could be Pizza Hut. No, I think I would do Traxxas. Traxxas, okay. That that would that would be good. You know, uh, we've got a, a a driver, Sheldon Creed, that's that run for Traxxas for years in the Robbie Gordon Stadium trucks and stuff like that. So that's a good choice. So I like their scheme. I'm sorry. I like their paint scheme. That's paint, why I kind of like them. Their paint scheme is very cool. So we know what we know where you're where you're headed to, and so let's take Jackson off the track a little bit. Um, what does Jackson like to do when you're not racing? I like to play video games downstairs where like nobody's near me. I just get to be by myself. I like to play basketball outside. I like to play with my friends. I do my homework, like which I don't really do that. I do really fast, so I don't really do that much. Oh, I play with my. I wrestle with my brother. He's. Yeah, we wrestle like all the time. With we throw balls at each other, we kick and punch each other. Sometimes we get hurt, but that's wrestling. And that's mostly what I do off the track. That's what you do off the track. So, if there's something that you could tell the viewers about Jackson that they don't maybe don't know, what would that be? A little secret about Jackson. Oh, I I have raced with a broken um broken wrist and I raced with a fractured ankle. You've raced with a broken wrist and a flat, fractured ankle. Well, you wouldn't want your competitors to know about that, so that that's pretty neat. So, before we wrap up tonight's show, are there any sponsors that you would like to give a little shout out to? Turf Coach Jurgers and White, a law firm down in Heightstown, New Jersey. Basilis, an Italian restaurant. Letter Motors, Lowrider Race Cars for giving me good motors and supplies. Um, that's basically it. That's all okay. my shout out. Now, do you have any websites or Facebook or any other social media things that you want to talk about? Yeah, my Facebook page is called Jackson White Racing. You can find videos, pictures, pick like all the stuff about racing, like you can find videos of me and my brother racing, you can find pictures of what me and my brother do off the track, you can find like all the stuff that we, me and my brother do at the racetrack. So my brother, you may see a picture of my brother playing with his friends or me playing with my friends or like promo day, me pushing off cars or things like that. Yeah, so you're, you sound like you're like a lot of other especially quarter midget drivers that I talk to, that some of your best friends are the guys that you actually race against that you see at the track all the time. Yeah, that's that's what most of my, my friends at school are asking me, who's your best friend? And I'm like, uh, it's one of my racing, racing friends. You don't you don't know who they are. And they're just like, oh, okay. I'm so like, what, do, what do your friends think about you being a race car driver? Um, most of them don't believe me. My dad came in before and showed the videos, but still, only like my best friends believe me. But my regular friends don't don't exactly believe that I'm a that I'm a good race car driver. Well, let me tell you what, friends in New Jersey, if you're watching, this is one of the top quarter midget racers in the country. He's got the hardware to prove it. He's got the videos to prove it, and now you've got a little TV segment to be able to prove it too. So, Jackson, thank you so much for being with us. Um, I hope you all the best of luck for the rest of the 2018 season. And I think that if you stay on pace with your focus and your desire, that one day <clears throat> you could be running in the NASCAR All-Star Race. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thanks for being with us. There you have it. Uh, Jackson White, nine years old, from New Jersey, quarter midget champion. I want to thank all of you for viewing the show tonight. Make sure to go out and check and like Jackson's Facebook page. Everybody have a great weekend, and as we always say, go out and support local racing in your communities. And if you've never been to a quarter midget race, I beg you to go out. You will have a blast. You'll see some of the hardest workers in racing, too, and that's the parents. So everybody, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you back here next week on Who's Next. Who's <laughs> Next?